Most humans don't like to lie. They feel like they must speak it like it is. And we get that. We don't want you to fabricate things. We just want you to choose from what's manifested or from what's in the process of manifesting and focus on whichever part of it you like the best because it's not wrong for it to be a mess. It got that way because you care about things and because you help a lot of other people and because you don't prioritize as well as you could. And we could talk all day about the reasons that anybody's in the jam that they're in, but none of that matters because in every bit of that mess forming, ooh, we like this so much. While you were making this mess, you were building this vortex. And the bigger the mess is, the bigger the vortex is. So if you could just know, I could look over there. Oh, it's so hard because over here, they're banging on my door. They're filling up my mailbox. I'm not sleeping at night. We get it. But you have the ability to focus better. You know, you don't even have to think about money. You can just think about things that aren't a mess. You could just think about the positive aspects. You can use any excuse you want to to hook up with your inner being who knows about your money and knows where it is and is telling you that the shoes are in front of the door and you're going to trip over them or that something's coming down the road that's going to slam into the side of you if you do what you're planning to do what's logical for you to do what the green arrow is telling you to do what the human others are saying that you should do there's all kinds of things that you might be doing because by whatever standards, it's the right thing to do, but your inner being is taking it all into consideration in an absolutely non-judging way about what's right and wrong and is calling you constantly to your path of least resistance. So what you want to do is start finding the path of least resistance rather than the rightness or the wrongness. Esther didn't say to Jerry, I'm so ashamed of you. That arrow was green and you just sat here. You just sat here like a non-compliant person. It's your outcomes that you're wanting to pay attention to, the connecting of the dots. So you want to turn thought to presence of money rather than turning thought to absence of money because it's the same process doesn't seem like it does it the absence of money seems different than the presence of money but it isn't because wanted or unwanted there's always a vibrational version of it first did you know the absence of money is a vibrational version there's no source of evil like there's the source of good any more than there is the source of darkness like the source of light it's just what you are focused on what you're letting in in any moment in time. If you want to get right to the specific subject of money, you've got to find a way to feel different about money. And we encourage that you make games of it instead of hardship, because it's easy to let it be hardship because the momentum of the hardship has been going on for a while. But if you can find a way to make a game of it, we encouraged many friends early on in the work that we're doing through Esther to get a column in your pad and just column, 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 and write down what you have to pay every month. Starting with the big stuff all the way to the littler stuff. So it was usually house payment and then car payment and then, 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 and over there's a bicycle payment maybe or something. However it works out for you. And then say to yourself as you look at it and be real about it, this is what I've promised to do, or this is what I need to do, or this is what I want to do. Put vacation fund in there too, and gift fund. Put anything in there that is important to you. And then look at it and say, I've decided to do this. I'm going to do my very best to do it. And sometimes I'm going to do double what I said I was going to do. And then on the very last column, the one that's the smallest, pay it twice and say to yourself, see? I'm going to do my best to do all of it. And I did that one twice. Now your logic might kick in and say, why are you paying something that you don't need to pay while you're not paying things that you're supposed to pay? And the answer is because I'm turning this into a game because I feel how I feel and I get what I'm feeling. What I'm feeling is what I'm getting. So this hardship, this not enoughness is what I'm feeling. So the law of attraction can't deliver what I've asked for, what I deserve, what's lined up, what's on its way, 
because the law of attraction cannot defy the resistance that I'm adding to the equation. It's all about momentum and inertia and resistance and friction and friction slows things down. Now you want some friction, otherwise you'd fly off in the bushes when you don't really want to. You like inertia. Inertia says if it's going that way, it's going to keep going that way unless something really changes. If the road stops going, you're still going to go that way, even though the road went that way. In other words, so you want some friction. You want some ability to control yourself. That's what your thoughts and emotions are all about. But understand that it's not going to change until you change the way you feel. And you've got to figure out how to change the way you feel without the conditions having to change first. That's why you're going to make a game of finances. It's already in motion. It's, there's already a track that's been laid, but you're laying a new track. This is going to be fun. And what you'll notice is, before you know it, that last one over there, there's nothing else on it. You paid it all off. Psh, happened really fast. Ooh, that felt good. It was a game. Instead of feeling tense and uncomfortable about whatever it is showing up in your inbox or your mailbox or wherever it shows up, you find yourself looking forward to it because it's more reason to play the game. You wish that you could play the game every day instead of just that one day. Do you have a pile of things that you're supposed to do that are in a corner in your somewhere and you haven't even opened them yet? Do you have any of those piles? Because you don't want to face what's in those because that doesn't feel fun. That feeling of not ready to start is contradicted energy. This game won't feel like that because as we were talking earlier, when you have uh, an idea of something that you care about, that you want, and you focus on things that are in harmony with that. So it just keeps feeling good. The momentum calls you and you can't not go. So don't confuse action with inspiration, with creation. There are a lot of things that you just don't feel like doing. And when you don't feel like doing something, it's not good to do it anyway, because you're trying to use action to cover up for the lack of alignment. But don't use your, I don't feel like doing it as an excuse either. Get into alignment and then do what you feel inspired to do. It's split energy when you want it, but it's split energy when your inner being knows what you want and is focused on it and you're focused on the opposite. That's split energy too. It's split energy when you say you're going to do something and don't do it and then feel guilty for not doing it. It's not split energy when you said you were going to do something and you don't feel like doing it. So instead you do something you feel like doing. Did you hear that? It's split energy when you say you're going to do something and you mean it and then you don't do it. But it's not split energy when you say you're going to do it and then don't feel like doing it and feel like doing something else and you do what you feel like doing. So as you start paying attention to how you feel instead of about what's right and what's wrong, because you are so deliberate about your thoughts, you get after yourself if you don't get a result that is quick. And that's because you're good at making things happen. But what you want to promote is being good at allowing things to happen that you've set into motion that you can't even clearly define. Because it is our promise to you. It's going to surprise you in more ways that it won't. And that doesn't mean you're going to have to accept parts that you weren't counting on. It's not like that at all. It's just so much more than you've articulated. Nothing less than alignment will do for you. You really have to get to this place in order to feel really good, comfortable about it, where you really do trust that you get to choose, that you have been choosing, you've done a really good job of choosing, and your choices from our perspective are complete. In other words, we don't think you need a whole lot more to define what this is all about. But you gotta nix the impatience. And you know where the impatience mostly comes from? Other people who look at you and have the flawed premise or misunderstanding or even the nerve to see you incomplete. Because if you could explain to them, it wouldn't do any good because they couldn't hear you anyway. But if you could explain to them what's really going on is that there's no incompletion. There's a state of becoming and you're looking for divine timing. And divine timing is about things lining up and only the law of attraction knows how to do that. So 
we really appreciate all you deliberate creators we really do but if you will stop trying to be the law of attraction <laughs> and just go with the flow of the law of attraction and know that you're out of whack with your own asking when you feel anything less than eager anticipation Jerry and Esther used to roam around in a lot of places where there were beautiful things to buy cars rugs furniture clothing jewelry stuff beautiful things Esther really loves it when vibration turns into things like that <laughs> and they'd go in and usually some nice person would come to them and say can I help you find something and Jerry always said two things we're just looking for something to want <laughs> but the thing that he said that was really closer to the core of what he meant is we'll know it when we see it that's the trusting we want you to have I'll know it when I see it and if I don't know it I haven't seen it when I'm not chasing it down the street licking at the ankles I haven't seen it <laughs> when I'm not waking up and that's the only thing I can think about I haven't seen it in other words I'm trying to make it happen but when it feels like that you've seen it then give your undivided attention to that for a while do you accept the existence of the vibrational reality that is the precursor to everything that is manifested yes. and do you acknowledge that it has a vibrational frequency that you want to match if you want to attract what's in it and do you accept that your inner being knows what's in it and is focused upon it and that you can feel that you have an awareness of your alignment with your inner being is that something that's easy for you to contemplate so does your logic tell you that when I'm worried I'm not on the signal and I'm not gonna get closer to it either because I've introduced resistance instead so what I want can't be isn't that easy to understand it takes a while to hone in doesn't it Esther has a gate at the back side of her property where her garages are and as she pushes a button and the gate opens and she can push it and make it stay open but she lets the gate close unless she knows that someone needs to get in and if she's pushed it open and it wants to close and something gets in the way of it it will stop because there's a transmitter and a receiver that keep the gate from closing on a car or a person or even a little dog so the other day the gate wouldn't close and Esther thought there's nothing keeping it from opening she pushed her clicker again it wouldn't close and then she thought about transmitting and receiving about alignment and she thought oh look at that little thing right there and she looked over there and there ah transmitter receiver so she just wiggled the thing and there was a red light on it and when she wiggled it the light turned blue and then the gate closed and she thought everything's the same isn't it <laughs> everything in your physical world goes by the same laws of physics in the physical but what should we call it in the non-physical these are powerful laws that don't bend to your confusion your confusion has to yield to these laws that's what this is all about so we talk endlessly about how you feel because how you feel is your closest indicator about when you've got resistance in the way when you're in alignment or when you're not when you're in alignment when you're not when you're in alignment or you're not yeah so in the case of the gate when the thing is lined up right everything's good unless something gets in the way and blocks a signal well when you've got your signal blocked you feel negative emotion you're blocking the signal or when you're not lined up it doesn't light up you see what we're getting at so just think in terms of how you feel for a little while and then watch what happens <laughs>